Are you ready for a day trip to the Outer Banks? This is about a 250 mile round trip. We would leave the west side of Washington from the Hardy's restaurant at 8 a.m. Our trip will begin by taking the countryside roads to Plymouth. There are three bridges we will cross as we travel to Mania. Our first bridge is in Columbia, North Carolina. The second is the Alligator River Bridge over the Intercoastal Waterway. And finally, the Virginia Dare Memorial Bridge in Manio. Our first destination on our trip is to visit the Wright Brothers National Monument. There is a $10 entrance fee. However, if you have a National Park Pass, it won't cost you a cent. We will call ahead to ensure a park ranger is available for our expected arrival. The tour is about 60 to 90 minutes. Here are a couple videos about the Wright Brothers and the National Monument. Wright Brothers National Memorial commemorates the site of the first successful human attempt at controlled flight. This flight was famously carried out on December 17, 1903 by Orville and Wilbur Wright, more commonly known as the Wright Brothers. The Wright Brothers were born in Dayton, Ohio, Wilbur in 1867 and Orville in 1871. They both attended but did not graduate from high school. In their late teens and early 20s, they operated a printing business where they produced their own newspapers and additional commercial work. They soon decided to use the mechanical knowledge they had gained building and operating printing presses to enter the industry of bicycle repair and eventually bicycle design. The bicycle craze of the late 1800s garnered them considerable success and they focused their earnings into the area of experimental flight. Building on ideas of others in the field of flight, such as Samuel Langley and Otto Lilienthal, the brothers set to work. They began with constructing gliders and experimenting with materials and shape. Although they were not the first to build experimental aircraft, the Wright brothers were the first to invent three-axis aircraft controls that made fixed-wing flight possible. In 1900, the brothers consulted with the U.S. Weather Bureau to identify a location that would meet their desired criteria. A wide open space, steady winds, isolation, elevation change, and soft sand for landing. They chose the Outer Banks of North Carolina due to the presence of several large sand dunes known in the area as Kill Devil Hills. After arriving at Kill Devil Hills, they endured weeks of delays caused by broken propeller shafts. After the shafts were replaced, requiring two trips back to Dayton, Wilbur won a coin toss and made a three-second flight attempt on December 14, 1903, stalling after takeoff and causing minor damage to the flyer. Following repairs, the Wrights finally took to the air on December 17th into a freezing headwind gusting to 27 miles per hour. The first flight by Orville at 10.35 a.m. traveled 120 feet in 12 seconds at a speed of only 6.8 miles an hour and was recorded in a famous photograph. The next several flights traveled even further and maintained an elevation of 10 feet above the ground. After the men hauled the flyer back from its fourth flight, a powerful gust of wind flipped it over several times, despite the crew's attempt to hold it down. Severely damaged, the plane never flew again. The brothers shipped it home and years later Orville restored it, lending it to several U.S. locations for display, then to a British museum, before it was finally installed in 1948 in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C., its current residence. Many of their early experiments ended in failure, yet each defeat brought them one step closer to their goal of achieving powered flight. There is little doubt that what the brothers achieved on the windswept dunes of Kitty Hawk, North Carolina changed our world forever. Wright Brothers National Memorial, established in 1927, celebrates their success at Kitty Hawk, providing a place for visitors to reflect on and be inspired by the dream of flight. But ironically, it also helped to alter the relative isolation of the Outer Banks, isolation that the brothers required for their flight experiments. 
Welcome to Wright Brothers National Memorial. I'm standing outside the Wright Brothers Monument that sits atop Big Kill Devil Hill, one of the spots Wilbur and Orville Wright conducted gliding experiments in an effort to perfect their three-axis control system, which would later be used on the Wright Flyer, the first powered, heavier-than-air manned airplane. The innate genius of the brothers, combined with their overall resolve and gumption, allowed them to beat the odds and accomplish what was thought impossible. To honor the accomplishments of these two, a monument was proposed by Representative Lindsey Warren of North Carolina and Senator Hiram Bingham of Connecticut in the late 1920s. After debate over the overall design of the structure, a contest was held with 33 submissions entered. Ultimately, Alfred Easton Poor and Robert Perry Rogers' design was selected. The cornerstone was laid on the 25th anniversary of the first flight on December 17, 1928, with Orville Wright in attendance. The monument would be completed in 1932, with Orville Wright and his extended family attending as well, and other prominent aviators and politicians of the time. The monument itself features an Art Deco style, with motifs highlighting aviation as a whole. On the side walls of the monument, abstract shapes represent wings and the prospect of flight. A quote is featured on the perimeter of the monument stating, In commemoration of the conquest of the air by the brothers Wilbur and Orville Wright, conceived by genius, achieved by dauntless resolution and unconquerable faith. At the very top is a marine or lighthouse type beacon, which we'll see a bit later. Let's open the doors and take a look inside. Here we are on the inside of the Wright Brothers Monument. As you can see, there's really not much going on. Prior to the Mission 66 Visitor Center being built, the inside of the monument here would have been a place for visitors to speak with a ranger, hear interpretive talks, and view the busts of Wilbur and Orville, which now sit outside and feature Orville looking to the west and Wilbur to the east. As we look around, we can also see two quotes on the wall embodying the accomplishment of the Wright Brothers. The long toil of the brave is not quenched in darkness, nor hath counting the cost fretted away the zeal of their hopes or the fruitful earth and athwart the sea has passed the light of noble deeds unquenchable forever. Pindar. From a point near the base of this hill, Wilbur and Orville Wright launched the first successful flight of a power-driven airplane, December 17, 1903. And finally, to cap off your monument experience, you could walk the narrow steps to the very top and take in some of the highest views of the surrounding areas. Let's go up the stairs and take a look. What a view! From here, about 150 feet above sea level, we can see the current visitor center, reconstructions of Wilbur and Orville's camp and hangar, and finally, the site at which they conducted four flights on December 17, 1903. With the completion of the monument, greater access to the Outer Banks was an issue that would need to be addressed. Bridges were built in the 1930s connecting these areas to the mainland, and that led to a larger influx of people visiting the area and moving here. This was a stark contrast from the isolation the Wright brothers were looking for when experimenting. To this day, the monument standing tall behind me remains a testament to the Wright brothers' legacy. The symbol on top of Big Kill Devil Hill reminds us that two brothers from Dayton, Ohio, saw possibility where it seemed non-existent. Now on to everyone's favorite time of day, lunch. Unfortunately, many restaurants are closed during the early months of the year. However, Striper's Bar and Grill is open and is on the Manio waterfront. Our next destination brings us to the North Carolina Aquarium at Roanoke Island in Manio. Please note, your tickets must be purchased online with your reservation prior to the trip. For ages 11 to 61, the cost is $12.95. And for ages 62 and up, $11.95. Let's check out this video on the aquarium.
As we wrap up our trip, we will leave Manio over the Man Harbor Bridge and on to 64 West to Greenville, or 264 West for a tour of the Eastern North Carolina Swamp Ecosystem, passing through Stumpy Point, Inglehard, Rose Bay, and Bellhaven to Washington. I am excited and look forward to this day trip. We expect to have the trip between late February and early March. I will check the park schedules and send out a voting link.